Hi everyone, it's day two of the My Favorite Things Chibitronics product swap and I'm popping in today to share a video showing you how to add fun lighting effects to your projects by adding a super easy parallel circuit. My project features the in pair stamp set, the A2 stitched rectangle stack set 1 dynamics, the stitch sentiment strips dynamics, and the tag builder blueprints 5 dynamics. I'm also using the copper tape, the conductive fabric tape, white LED light stickers, and a CR2032 battery, all from Chibitronics. Most of these items can be found in the Chibi Light starter set. I'm also using some smooth white cardstock, poppy cardstock, and some gravel gray cardstock. I'm starting off with a 4 and a quarter by 5 and a half inch piece of smooth white cardstock, and I'm inking up the Eiffel Tower image from the in Paris stamp set using black licorice hybrid ink. I'm stamping the Eiffel Tower image a second time onto some low tack masking material using stays on jet black ink. This is a solvent ink, so it won't smear. I'll cut this out with my detail scissors and remove the release paper and place it on top of the previously stamped image. Once the mask is in place, I can now stamp the cute chateau onto the image panel, again using black licorice hybrid ink. And I stamp the image a total of four times. Be sure and clean off your stamp in between each stamped image to avoid transferring any leftover ink. Off camera, I stamp the chateau onto more of the low tack masking material, again using stays on jet black ink. I stamped it four times and I've trimmed them out with my detail scissors. I'm adhering them to my image panel and I'm gonna do a bit of ink blending. Once the chateau masks are in place, I'm removing the mask for the Eiffel Tower. I probably could have done this before I put the other masks in place, but I didn't. Hence the mini struggle that I'm having removing it. I use my detail scissors to trim out the area where the tower overlaps with the chateaus. You'll notice that I switched scissors midstream. Sometimes you just need those teeny tiny scissors to get into the tight corners of an image. Now for some ink blending. I'm not gonna show you every detail of my ink blending process because you've seen it a million times before. And I really wanna spend the bulk of my time showing you how to create the circuit for the lights. I started with a light blend of Twisted Citron, followed by a light blend of Mowed Lawn for the grassy area. Then I blended some Tumble Glass, Mermaid Lagoon, and Salty Ocean to create my night sky. I finished it off with more Tumble Glass just to blend all the colors together. I want to add some splatters of white watercolor to my sky for stars, so I'm replacing the Eiffel Tower mask to protect that area. I've added some water to my white watercolor pot, and I'll stir it up until the consistency is smooth but still pretty opaque. I load a pretty small watercolor brush up with a white pigment and tap on the brush to add light splatters. And then I carefully remove all of the masks. Now I'm using my piercing tool and a foam mat to poke small holes on the Eiffel Tower. I poke a hole where each of the grid lines cross, from the top of the Eiffel Tower to the bottom. And then I use a 1 8 inch hand punch that I had in my stash to punch out the light at the top of the tower. I'm scoring a four and a quarter inch by 11 inch smooth white card base at five and a half inches, and I fold it in half and perfect the crease with my Teflon bone folder. I've placed the image panel onto the card base, and I'm using a pencil through the poked holes to transfer the light pattern. This will help me to know where I wanna place the light stickers. And before you freak out, it's okay to draw onto the card base because it'll all be covered up by the image panel. Now I'm marking where I think I want my light stickers to go. The lights will actually radiate to multiple holes, so you don't have to place a light sticker for every hole. For now, I'm just guesstimating where I want them to go. I'm using my scissors to cut the copper tape in half. It's an eighth inch wide, and I want to cut it into 16th inch pieces for ease in placing it onto the card base. I really like working with the thinner pieces. I cut a strip of printer paper three quarter inches wide, and I'm wrapping it around the CR2032 cell battery. I use my scissors to trim off the excess, and I'll fold it in half and adhere it to the card base in the lower right hand corner with my tape runner adhesive. I'll be adding foam tape later, so I need to leave a little room on the edges of the card base. Now I'm marking the top of the battery house with a minus for the negative side of the circuit and a plus for the positive on the inside of the battery house. This will help me keep track of which side is which when I go to connect the circuit. I'll also mark a minus sign on the right side of the tower and a plus sign on the left side. Again, keeping track of the circuit connections is critical in making sure it'll work. Now I can start adding the self-adhesive copper tape. I just pull back the paper backing and start sticking it to the card base along the pattern of where I want the lights to be. When I need to turn a corner, I bend the tape back on itself in the opposite direction that I want the tape to go and then fold it towards the next endpoint. 
You'll notice that I marked the positive and negative on the inside legs of the tower in order to remind myself where I'm going with the tape. If you want to, you can draw the path of the copper tape onto the card base before starting so that you're sure you're putting it in the right place. I actually meant to do this and forgot. I've made these circuits a few times now, so I feel more comfortable just laying the copper tape down without the pre-drawn path. I'm on the final leg of the negative side of the circuit, and you can see that I've curved it around and I'm running the tape along the inside of the previous path so that I can add tape to the negative side of the right leg of the tower. It's important that the two circuits never cross over each other, so doing this will still give me room for the positive side of the circuit. And now you can see that I'm running the tape over the top of the negative side of the battery house and taking it all the way to the inside of that negative flap. I use my scissors to trim off the excess, and I use my fingernail to press down on the path of the tape to make sure it's securely adhered to the card base. I'm laying one of the light stickers down so that I can eyeball the distance between the positive and negative tracks of the circuit. You want the two tracks to be far enough apart that the metal on both sides of the light will lay on the tracks. If your tracks are too far apart, you won't be able to make the connection. I continue to lay the positive track of the circuit, basically following the same path as before. When you get to the bottom, it's important again to make sure that the positive and negative tracks don't cross over each other, or the circuit won't work. It really is simple engineering, but there are a few things that need to be watched in order for the science of it all to work. And if you have to make a few practice runs before you get the hang of it, that's okay too. The nice thing is, you're doing this all on the card base, and can easily start over with a new card base if you mess it up. As I get to the end of the path, I run the tape along the bottom of the battery house and curve it up so that it goes into the inside of the battery house on the positive side. I trim off the excess copper tape with my scissors, and then I'm rubbing my fingernail along the path of the tape to make sure it's secured properly. I promise this will all start to make sense as we get into the next part of building our circuit. Now it's time to start adding the light stickers. If you look closely at the light stickers, you'll see that there's a plus sign and a minus sign on each light. You want to make sure that you're placing the light stickers so that the positive side of the sticker is adhered to the positive side of the circuit track and the negative side is adhered to the negative side of the circuit track. I'm placing the light sticker strategically along the circuit path to make sure the lights are spread out evenly. I ultimately used seven light stickers because I really wanted the Eiffel Tower to shine brightly. I also wanted to mention that if I only had one light that I wanted lit, I'd make what's called a simple circuit. But because I had multiple lights that I wanted lit, I created a parallel circuit. You can see that I placed the positive side of the battery onto the positive side of the battery house. And as I lay the negative flap of the battery house onto the negative side of the battery, some of the lights light up, but not all of them, which means I need to do some troubleshooting. Typically, if the lights don't light up, it means that the light stickers aren't adhered securely. So I'm using my bone folder to really press down on the metal portions of the light stickers to make sure they're good and stuck. And I test them each time by pressing the negative flap to the battery. If you still can't get those light stickers to light up, I found that placing a piece of fabric conductive tape where the lights connect to the copper path works to assure that your stickers are connecting to the circuit. All of the circuit supplies that I've used on my parallel circuit with the exception of the fabric conductive tape, can be found inside the Chibi Light starter set. The starter set also includes a booklet of instructions for the different kinds of circuits, including the parallel circuit that I've created here today. All of the supplies can be purchased separately as you run out. Now I'm adding two layers of quarter inch foam tape to three sides of the battery house. This will help keep that battery in place. And you really need two layers in order to account for the depth of the battery. I suggest that you not remove the release paper from the top layer of tape around the battery house, and you'll see why later on. Once I have the two layers around the battery house, I'm adding two layers of foam tape around the outside edge of the card base. Be sure and leave room towards the edge of the card base so that the tape isn't exposed when we attach our image panel. And you'll notice that I placed a layer of foam tape over the copper tape. That's perfectly okay and won't interfere with the connectivity of the circuit. Now I'm die cutting the outside edge of the image panel with the largest of the A2 stitched rectangle stack set one dynamics. I'm partially peeling back the release paper from the foam tape. This will give me some wiggle room for placing the image panel onto the card base in case I initially get it on there a little wonky. 
Once in place, I can remove the rest of the release paper from the foam tape. And I guess I forgot to mention that I colored the images off camera to give me enough time to focus on the building of the light circuit. Next, I'm prepping a piece of gravel gray cardstock with my powder tool, and I'm inking up one of the sentiments from the In Paris stamp set with Sweet Tooth Pigment ink. I'll heat emboss it off camera with white embossing powder. I'm die cutting the hearts from the Tag Builder Blueprints 5 Dynamics from some poppy cardstock, and I'll die cut the sentiment using the Stitch Sentiment Strip Dynamics. I've added some foam squares to the back of the sentiment strip, and I'll adhere it to the upper left hand corner of the image panel. I'm adhering the hearts to the image panel using some multimedia mat and a jewel picker. I place a piece of typing paper between the negative flap of the battery house and the battery to keep the battery from connecting all the time. When you remove the strip and press on the bottom right corner of the card, the lights on the Eiffel Tower light up in such a magical way. I always get a thrill when I see all of my efforts come together to make a really fun and unique interactive card. Thanks so much for watching my video today. I hope you enjoyed it and that you'll give these chibi light circuits a try. Be sure and check out the other videos linked above for more great content and have an awesome day.